You are listening to episode 183 of the Confident Coaches Podcast, the one where you start playing more to sell more. Welcome to the Confident Coaches Podcast, a place for creating the self-confidence you need to do your best work as a life coach. If you want to bring more boldness, more resilience, and more joy to your work, this is the place for you. I'm your host, Amy Latta. Let's dive in. Okay, coach, this episode, this episode has been one of the most fun ones I've ever created. It was a bit of a mind blower for me creating it. And this is a super necessary conversation about how we've been outsourcing and holding our own dopamine hostage and why for many of us, maybe most of us, this is a business killer. So no matter if you're brand new, if you are in the, you know, the, the, that scaling or that growth area, not scaling, but like if you're growing your business, if you're scaling your business, no matter what level of success or not success that you have had, this episode is an eye opener for me as a coach who's created you know, well over a million dollars in coaching revenue, who makes multiple six figures a year. I've learned so much. And it all started with, well, it didn't all start with, it starts with, there's there a lot of roads that led me here. <laughs> but the easiest place to start this conversation is why, why the phrase work hard, play hard has sucked every time I've ever heard it. Um, I can't remember exactly when I first heard it, but for sure, my first 10 years post-university in the corporate world, play hard, I'm sorry, work hard, play hard, was a mantra that I heard. And I never liked it, but I had no idea why. Like I didn't like get into life coaching until I was like 38, 39 years old. <laughs> so I had no idea in my 20s. I didn't even really understand what life coaching was in my 20s. And I didn't understand why this, why, why I bumped this. Like I kept bumping up against work hard, play hard. Because all I heard, all I heard was hard. Work hard, play hard. All I hear is hard. My brain's like, I don't like it. <laughs> I also didn't know in my 20s that I had ADHD. So like we're, we're not going to like totally dive into that. But ADHD does come into this conversation, even though that's not necessarily the focus of it. But work hard, play hard. Like, not only is it just hard is the only thing that I hear, but it's clear in that phrase that your play is an earned thing, right? We're going to work hard and then we're going to play hard and we're going to keep rotating between the two, but the play hard is always coming after the work hard, right? As opposed to play just being a part of your life and who you are. And when I've had this conversation with clients in free to paid coach, in Path to 100K, even in one-to-one -one coaching, the first thing that I will hear is the fear that if play doesn't come after work, they'll never work. That inherently is bullshit. But it is so ingrained that if we play before work or as a part of work, we won't be as productive, even though science says otherwise. And I have to be honest with you, I, I really don't love that work hard, play hard has become a big part of the self-help life coaching world. Like, isn't life coaching where we dismantle beliefs like this, not reinforce them? <laughs> Like, isn't this what we do? Challenge rules, understand why we follow them, understand what actually motivates us. Like, it just seems so counterintuitive to me. And the, just the bottom line is, is like, I don't like it now. I didn't like it then. And it's really funny. So I was watching um, Firefly Lane on Netflix because I read the books. It's a, it's, a, it's a series on Netflix that's based on novels that I read like 10 years ago. And there's the scene uh, that the, the series takes place from the 70s, 80s, 90s. Like it, it spans four decades. Okay. 
So there's this scene from, I believe it was the late 80s. The scene was being shown in the late 80s where both a, a man and a woman are trying to run an expose on the discrepancy between men and women getting hired. And so they're both applying for the same job. And the, the boss is kind of this smarmy sales guy. And he's clearly misogynistic and trivia, trivializes the woman applicant over the less qualified male applicant. And he keeps reiterating the idea of like, we work hard to play hard around here. Like, I was like, see, there it is. That's why I hate it. <laughs> it's misogynistic. It's, uh, it's so many things, right? It's patriarchal. It's hierarchical. It's misogynistic. Like, it's always rubbed me wrong. But it really wasn't until I saw it permeating a life coaching world did I ask, why does this bother me so much? And what's, what, what's the other focus? Like, if we're not working hard to play hard, then what, what should we be doing around here? And the more I keep sifting through this, like, I just keep seeing the lines that keep directly going back to patriarchy and colonialism and oppression the withholding of reward for your hard work, the perform for me, and then I will give you the reward. And I, like the, the they, the they withholding the reward, they determine whether or not your work was good enough. They are the ones that are determining whether you work hard enough to decide whether you get to get the reward. In the corporate modern world, you can work your ass off. But if you don't hit that sales goal specified, you don't get to go on the big trip like everybody else. Right? You are not the, the, the determiner. The determiner? I don't know if I just made up that word. <laughs> but the power lies in someone else. And it's up to you to perform to a certain level. But they still get to decide where the bar is and they get to move the bar if they want to. They get to, you know, fudge around with the qualifications. I seen it. I saw it more than once. I saw it happen multiple times. You think you're shooting for here. And then when you go and say, hey, why didn't I get the thing? Suddenly the bar has moved. I, I saw it happen more than once. And to me personally, to friends, it's so, it's so uh, prominent. And then I really started to understand last fall when I visited Ireland. Um, when I visited Ireland last fall for two weeks, I didn't know I was going to get a history lesson and a lesson on like geopolitical oppression. I really just thought I was going to visit like where my ancestors came from. <laughs> now, to be clear, I am a European mutt. I am mostly of Irish descent, but I'm also British and Scottish and German. I think there might be a little Swedish thrown in there a little bit too. And I knew vague history, but I didn't truly understand the 800 years of angst between the British and the Irish. How Britain took Irish lands and many Irish people got their lands taken away from them only to become indentured servants on those lands. And I did write a couple posts last fall with where I was really processing and understanding. And this was on my personal Facebook page, where I was really processing and understanding for the first time the idea of colonialism and oppression of white people by white people. Now, as a white woman discussing oppression and colonialism, 100% the indentured servitude of the Irish, not the same as the human slave trade of black and brown people all over the world, much of which still exists today. My ancestors had the ability to leave. I don't know how they did. They were not people of means, but they did have the ability to leave on their own accord and come to the U.S. in the 1850s. So with much sensitivity and acknowledging my personal privilege as a white woman in America, any oppression that exists for me today, it's in my head. It's not happening in the real world. And for anyone in this world, like literally for billions of people right now who do not have my privileges, this oppression on various levels still exists in reality. It's their circumstance. It is not their thinking. 
I'm not the person to lead conversations on how colonialism hurts non-white people. This conversation about what I learned when I was visiting Ireland and really understanding that 800 years of strife was merely to note the line between this withholding reward for work has lineage to oppressive, patriarchal, hierarchical, colonialist ideas. And most of us are still living under that colonialist idea of working hard for someone else in hopes that they grace us with the gift of reward. Only now, we're the entrepreneurs, we're the someone else withholding it from ourselves, deciding that we have to hit X marks, X number, X goal to take time off and to rest and to actually play and enjoy. My recent foray into the world of diagnosed ADHD really helped me understand this on an entirely new level. Like, okay, here's why I don't like the idea of work hard, play hard, but here's why it actually hurts you on so many levels. And this is where the conversation leads us to dopamine. So dopamine can get a bad rap in the coaching world. Uh, that this idea that we want to use our prefrontal cortex to make decisions and not let your brain's incessant need, desire for, seeking of dopamine to make decisions. And agreed, when it comes to writing an offer to your audience versus scrolling Instagram, mm-hmm. you're, you are letting that need for that simple hit of d- dopamine to keep you scrolling instead of doing the work that you really need to do, Right. So many of us have been coached to outthink that need for dopamine. So like examples such as an urge jar where you learn to overcome the discomfort of wanting the quick hit. You clink a pebble into the jar and that, that click, that clink of the pebble becomes a dopamine hit in and of itself. It's like training a dog with a clicker. The clicker sounds becomes something that the dog associates with, associates with an award. So like dopamine is not bad. Dopamine is the feel good neurotransmitter. Dopamine promotes pleasure and learning and growth and motivation. So let's think about this. In this work hard, play hard mentality, it's coaching us to sit through the discomfort of the task so that we get the huge dopamine at the end of the task from the sense of accomplishment. And this isn't necessarily bad, which I'm gonna come back around to. And and this can work for a lot of people and for way more people, I suspect. I don't have scientific numbers on this, but I have a lot of anecdotal evidence. It's holding our dopamine hostage. The very thing we need for learning and motivation to do the task is being withheld from us until we do the task. And then when you factor in someone like me, who naturally has a defect in their brain. I don't even like to use the word defect. I'm just wired differently, where I'm wired in such a way that dopamine is deficient inside my brain. My brain naturally has less dopamine than the gal sitting next to me. And side note, I want to be really clear. I'm using a ton of layman's terms. I'm way oversimplifying what's going on in the brain. This episode is how to play more to sell more, not a dissertation on dopamine, neurotransmitters, neuroscience. So please understand that caveat that there's way more that goes into this than what we're covering here, but it is super important. And so let's recap here. Work hard, play hard, withholds reward till the end. This can train your brain to become comfortable doing the uncomfortable. It can also make what you're doing 10 times harder. For me, I could sometimes overcome this and then sometimes not. And then what I'm getting ready to share with you is how I actually, as I grew in my business, I kept making it harder and harder and harder by continually eliminating my sources of dopamine, which I needed more of because of how I was wired. And it makes so much sense, right? This thing, this is so ingrained in our culture. It's all over the corporate world. Like you, how your dopamine is being gatekept by the higher ups. This keeps you working for them instead of the joy for it. Like when the joy of it 
Like that's what keeps you more productive, right? Like science shows us that we will get more done and have a higher quality of production when we are in the joy of it and the happiness of it now, not later, right? Like this is like, like this is kind of like an idea of like continually hanging the carrot in front of you until you get to the destination, as opposed to allowing yourself to have a little carrot a little bit along the way the whole time, right? One journey is way more enjoyable than the other, but in this like, we don't want to be run by our dopamine res- receptors at all. We want to like really be only be making our, our decisions and ideas coming from our prefrontal cortex and nothing else. This can be a business killer. It, and it was well on the way for me, for sure. And it might be for you too. So here's where it gets super juicy, okay? If we are the source of our own happiness, If we don't need their reward, then we don't need them. And that is dangerous to them. And even in the life coaching world, the biggest top coaches want you to need them. They want you to keep renewing over and over again and convince you that you cannot achieve your goal unless you are working with them. And they're going to give you the top honors award, the biggest recognition, make you a star in their world. Guys, top earner awards, that recognition is just another form of like sugar and flour. It becomes about the win to be seen in favor of their eyes. And when you say, listen, I'm going to step away from that. Ooh, if you leave, you're just not dreaming big enough. You don't, you have too many thought errors. As opposed to, no, I just want to be the star in my own damn show. And you really You want a coach who has your best interest in mind, not theirs, who will nurture you in that and helping you find what motivates you, what spurs you, what helps you move forward. You want a coach who will coach you to not need them, but to need you. So what if, now hear me out, what if we stop withholding dopamine? What if we actually fueled our days with dopamine on the front end? Now, there's a lot of ways you can do this. And I for sure thought that I was, right? And we've we've all heard this. This is why you want to exercise first thing in the morning. Go get that bright sunshine in the morning. Meditate or any other kind of mindfulness activity. Self-coach in the morning. Do all of your deep thinking in the morning. Access that part of your brain in the morning. Like, sure, but... What if that ain't working? (laughs) What if you need the motivation to be able to do those things? What if that's not your source of motivation? Listen, I moved my body. I self-coached. I got good sleep. I like I spent years trying to get my sleep back in order. I eat super healthy meals. Loading up on like, guys, my my supplement regimen is a little bit ridiculous. I'm on rhodiola and the ashwagandha and the B12 and all of the other feel goodness you can possibly imagine and still the more successful I got in the biz- my business, the more of a struggle bus that it became. So recently, I had my free-to-pay coach group create a dopamine menu for themselves. Now, a dopamine menu is an ADHD tool that I'm bringing into the business, even if you don't have ADHD. And all a dopamine menu is, is a menu of what fuels dopamine for you so that you can use that dopamine to become more, to spur your motivation, to spur your growth on the front end. I know, like it makes so much sense. (laughs) It makes so much sense. Are you serious? I mean, we hear you got to do you in business. Nobody else can build your business for you. You got to do it your own way. But this is a way of examining what doing you really looks like. Like day to day on, on, an, on a given Tuesday morning, what are you doing? What are you engaged in that is you and no one else? So a dopamine menu, like, and the reason we call it a menu, because we're going to borrow language from restaurant menus to categorize your, what the activities. So you're talking about appetizers, 
appetizers are kind of like quick hits of dopamine. Uh, main entrees, main entrees require a little bit more planning, but they give you a larger dose of dopamine. Sides would be things that you can do or engage in alongside the work that you are doing. And desserts, which we would normally associate, like these are the things we would normally associate with dopamine hits that we would say, you know, if you're engaged in one of these things, scrolling on Facebook, watching Netflix or whatever, you know, we would dis- we would distract you or encourage you not to engage in those things. Don't do those things instead of doing your work. But they aren't actually bad things. You just don't want to be doing them. Like if you're supposed to be writing an email sequence, you don't want to be scrolling on Instagram. So maybe you don't want to go to the dessert part of your dopamine menu. Maybe you want to go to the app part of your menu. Maybe you want to go to the appetizer part of your menu. How do you create a dopa menu? Here's a couple questions for you. First, what creates more energy in your day? And if you don't know, pay attention over the course of the next week or so and just pay attention. What energizes you? What activities do you do that have nothing to do with your business, that have everything to do with your business? Just in general, what energizes you? What brings you joy? What just, what makes you happy? What do you do during the weeks, during the days that makes you happy? What do you do? And then what are you doing that feels forced? What do you do because it seems to be a best practice that this coach or a thousand coaches or how many ever coaches have said that you need to do, but it feels forced to you? How can you accomplish the same thing with more energy or play or joy? So some examples from mine. Okay, so I actually have, like, I created a big dopa menu. I shared it with my people in Free to Paid Coach. And so I had things like my appetizers might be uh, dancing around, taking a few deep breaths, stepping out into sunshine. I might uh, take a coloring break or a small puzzle break. Um, I might uh, tackle some easy tasks with my favorite music playing. My entrees, again, these are longer activities that require planning and time, but you get a long, you, you get the deeper dopamine hit. Like this might be working out, reading a book, uh, you know, coaching sessions or long chats with friends, a date night. And again, these can be business activities. They can be personal activities, but you just kind of want to think about what activities would fall into these categories. Sides, sides accompany your work. So for me, this is for sure listening to music. Maybe there's a comedian in the background. Um, quick texting with my business bestie. Uh, you know, fun pieces, fun things in your office that other people might think were a little ridiculous. And then desserts. Desserts are probably pretty, pretty simple to define. These are the things that give you dopamine hits that aren't necessarily bad, but do distract you from doing your business. So you, you know, you want to be mindful of overindulging. This is social media, movies, online shopping. Oh, I forgot about specials. Specials are like big activities that only happen occasionally, like maybe a long weekend away or, you know, um, live coaching events or retreats or vacations. This is not a comprehensive list. That's not even everything I wrote down. If you want to say everything I wrote down, you have to go in a free-to-paid coach. But this is just a sampling of what we're talking about that can be put on your DOPA menu. Okay, so here's something that's really interesting. That as I was doing this work, as I was creating dopamine menus, I was first, again, I was doing it towards the idea of how do I help my newly diagnosed ADHD, but then totally saw a correlation to this is how we incorporate more play into your life, into your day, so that you are more energized and motivated and more creative when you go to work. Like, are you working out because you're supposed to or are you working out because it actually does spur your motivation and your creativity? For some people, it naturally does that. Yay, amazing, keep doing it, right? But for somebody else, maybe that's not working for them. 
why not incorporate some play on the front end of your business day? And this is where I, this is, as I was connecting these two ideas, a dopamine menu to help me with my ADHD symptoms, with how do I teach people to play more to sell more? This is when I really realized that being coached to spend the front part of my day in a creativity mode. Like start with creativity, then do your coaching sessions. That didn't work for me. I didn't understand why it didn't work for me. Because I didn't have the dopamine I needed as somebody who has an ADHD dopamine deficient brain that was struggle bus. Then here's here's some of the kickers. Guys, oh my God, my brain. Oh my goodness, when I saw all of this. So you know, as I became more successful, how many times have you heard to outsource your administrative tasks? Like everybody, like this is best practice across the board. If you want a self-concept of a CEO brain, you should not be spending your time doing things that you could hire out for much less money. This is like how to CEO 101, right? So giving all of my administrative and tasky work to a VA. You know what I was doing? I was giving away a lot of those simple tasks that give me short boosts of accomplishment in my ADHD deficient brain. I was outsourcing it to somebody else and paying them for the privilege of it. And to that point about spend your creative time up front and then you know, do your super thinking on the front end of the day and then do any of the other work. That goes along with as I was growing and as I moved into a group coaching program that was all about scaling, it was all about eliminating one-on-one for group coaching. You know, going from 20 hours a week to only two hours a week of coaching. But here's the thing. When I'm coaching somebody one-on-one, this is dedicated time where I can only focus on the human in front of me because they're literally on a Zoom screen staring at me. And it's coaching, which is my favorite thing to do. And I feel more inspired, more motivated, more creative after coaching. So this whole thing where you should get rid of all of your administrative tasks and you should drastically reduce the number of hours doing coaching and you should do all your super thinking and CEO work on the front end, you should eat the frog first, right? You should do the hardest thing first. Didn't work for literally years. Years, 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 years. If I can save one coach, (laughs) if I can save one coach, guys, oh my gosh, the, uh, the emotions are coming. For years, being coached, or thinking that I had an, an, I couldn't let go of my inadequacy. I had an inability to level up my self concept, that I had a belief problem. I didn't have a belief problem, I had a dopamine problem. But the more I grew, I've been coached every which way till Tuesday on my self concept, on my belief, on my inadequacy. We're talking literally years of why I was still people pleasing, why I was still doing all of these things as I continually kept getting rid of everything that gave my brain dopamine. I think about that version of Amy that sat there and I I didn't know and having a coach who could have just said, hmm, this doesn't seem to be working for you. If you're not doing anything wrong and I'm not doing anything wrong, let's go explore why this isn't working for you. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I still, I've been processing through this for literally weeks and I still get this emotional over all of that time that I thought that this was the problem and it never was. So, When I say play more, (laughs) there's a reason why. And I also want to be really clear. 
Okay, so like I didn't have a belief or a self-concept problem. I just outsourced most of my dopamine. That doesn't mean that you should, you shouldn't outsource your admin, right? That doesn't mean that you shouldn't go from 20 calls a week to one group call. It doesn't mean that that's a bad idea for you. This goes back to the questions of like what creates more energy in your day? What brings you joy? What feels forced to you? Like I figured out pretty quickly, not pretty quickly. It literally took me years too. But by the time I was in the scaling rooms, I'd figured out that calendaring did not work for me, right? But this is why you want to have a, a, you want to have the ability to identify these things for you. What fuels you? What feels forced? And your willingness to change your mind when you find out new information. Oh, I did this thing. I outsourced all of my admin. I find myself like keep going back to it. And like everybody else tells me why. Like, oh, maybe I just need to make a different decision. So this doesn't mean you're automatically going to know for sure what you should and shouldn't outsource. This has more to do with if you find that you aren't doing things that have given you joy and you stop doing them, you can always bring them back. This is really a conversation. Play more, sell more is really a conversation about building trust in yourself that you really do know what's best for you. Okay. This is what confident coaching really is. It's such a level of trust in yourself. And even better if you do it in a, with a coach who's not going to say, that's not how we do it. We're not going to coach on this thing again. It's not play more, sell more is not just a fun slogan. It's literally years of realization that I'm coming to that pleasure and joy and fun not only can, but should fuel your business. That when you are the source of your own dopamine, you don't need their recognition for that dopamine hit at the end because you've been providing it to yourself the entire time. And here's the best news. You still get the dopamine hit of accomplishing the big thing at the end. We're not eliminating that dopamine hit. We're not eliminating that sense of accomplishment at all. Being a coach who accomplishes the impossible, but how you get there doesn't have to be an exercise and how terrible you're willing to feel in order to get there. So the free to paid coach site is getting a remodel. Okay. And creating your own dopamine is just one of the things that I'm adding to the program after having coached and free to paid coach for over a year. And it's going to be ready. We've got a tentative June, a tentative June date. Okay. But this concept of play more, sell more, it's not just going to hit free to paid coach. It's going to hit every single element of coaching with me. So no matter where you are in your business, incorporating more play. And now you know why you need to. Why you you now understand why you don't have to withhold that from yourself and really understanding that playing more, starting your day, incorporating it into your day actually allows you to be more productive, more motivated, more creative than if you withhold it from yourself. And we can see where these roots come from and we can just start questioning all of it. And here's the best news. You don't have to wait until June and August when all of this new work that I've really started to understand is fully flushed out in the programs to start coaching with me. Because if you join now, free to paid coach, if you join the mastermind path to 100k, which is really, it's really more about path to profitability. Really path to 100k is way more about becoming a profitable coach, not just a 100k coach, because you can make hundreds of thousand dollars and not have an ounce of income. I don't want to create a mastermind where you're not making money for you. So it's really about path to profitability. And then if you really want to become prosperous, if you really want to grow into a prosperity, then you can work with me one-on-one also. 
And you do not have to wait until these, you know, until the technical work is all worked out. Anybody joining in the month of May is going to get like in free to paid coach, you don't get one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, but you're going to get one on, you're going to get some one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. And you're just going to get more one-on-one -on -one coaching with me if you join one of the other programs. Anybody signing up for coaching in May is going to get more time with me to help them figure out, like these can be strategy, this can be deep dive coaching, and it can be all about this concept right here of how are you going to incorporate more play? How are you going to build a business that is more reflective of you than anything else? So now is the time to get in because this offer, it ain't going to stick around. If you're listening to this podcast episode months later, sorry, it's probably not available right now. <laughs> But all of the content is ready to go for you right now, okay? So join in the month of May 2023. If you're joining Free to Paid Coach, you're going to get one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. It's never been... It's never been an offer that's been on the table. And if you join my group program or my one-on-one -on -one program, which already includes some one-on-one, -on -one, you're just going to get more of it. You're going to get more of that time to incorporate more of these ideas for you in a way that you need it to happen. All right, my friends, this is why we got to play more, to sell more. It's not just a fun slogan. It's necessary. It's imperative. This is how you are going to build a coaching business that lights your soul on fire because you actually enjoy doing it. I have had a sign on my wall that says we have fun in all that we do for literally years. Guys, I had no idea. I had no idea how deep that philosophy ran. It's not just a fun sign on my wall. It's imperative to my growth. And I bet it's imperative to yours. I cannot wait to hear how you incorporate this work. If you are feeling this, tag me, share with, share this podcast. I am at, I am Amy Latta. Share what you needed to hear today. Share with that coach that's struggling right now. And I am so excited to see what you create in the world. Talk to you next week. Coach, it's time to sign your first free client, your first paid client, your next client and to learn how to do it consistently and having a hell of a lot of fun along the way. This is exactly what you're going to do in Free to Paid Coach. It's the only program giving you step-by-step -step what to do to become a paid coach and step-by-step -step how to handle the roller coaster emotions that come with doing what you need to do to become a paid coach. If you know you can't not do this life coaching thing, but believing that you can do it, handling rejection, and remembering how to do all of those things shuts you down, the free to paid coach community is waiting for you. Find everything that you're looking for inside. It's only $1,000, payments are available, and then you are in forever. Visit amylatta.com forward slash FTPC to join us right now. See you inside. Let's get paid, coach. Thanks so much for listening to the Confident Coaches podcast. I invite you to learn more. Come visit me at amylatta.com. And until next week, let's go do epic stuff. <laughs>